Bonjour pour tout. My name is Aurélie and this is Meet and Read. I'm very excited about today's video because uh, this is the time for me to tell you how much I love the Middle Ages and to mention some books uh, which made me fall in love with the Middle Ages since I was a child, really. If that's something you're interested in, then uh, keep watching. My passion for the Middle Ages, um, I'm talking about Western Europe here, um, comes from my childhood. Uh, there were several things that explain why I fell in love with that period of human history. Um, books are one of those things, but you will see they were often related to other media like movies and TV shows. So that's the stuff I want to explore today with you. The first thing I remember is the broadcast of a French mini-series on TV uh, inspired by a collection of books Les Rois Maudits, The Accursed King by Maurice Druon. I have already mentioned this um, series of books in a previous video and that this is one of the inspirations for uh, George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire. When you read Les Rois Maudits, when you read The Accursed Kings, you can totally see <laughs> uh, what uh, Martin uh, took from, from this huge, huge uh, piece of French modern classic literature. This is uh, a piece of historical fiction set in the 14th century and we follow many historical figures and fictional characters through a long span of time, perhaps 20 or 30 years. And uh, in, this, in this series of books, Maurice Druon explored uh, how, uh, through a chain of events, uh, the Hundred Years' War started between France and England at the time. I watched the TV miniseries in the 1980s when I was a child was uh, a set a new broadcast. The TV series was uh, originally released in 1972, but I was not around yet <laughs> to watch it. I enjoyed, uh, even though I didn't understand everything, I enjoyed this uh, TV series uh, in the 1980s. I enjoyed the costumes, I enjoyed what I, I could grasp of the relationships between the, the characters. And um, you have to understand that this TV series was a huge, huge production back in, in the 1970s in France. You had uh, the top, the best of the best uh, theatre actors at the time. You can imagine the best British Shakespearean actors all coming together to play in a, a a piece about French history and it, it, it was magnificent. This is this is a great story, fabulous actors, everything came together to make this this beautiful uh, TV experience. And so that that's one of the first memories uh, of media about the Middle Ages and I was really hooked uh, already back then. I have read the books years later and uh, I can only encourage you to at least pick the first book, uh, the, the Iron King. And see if you like it. And, uh, I can guarantee that if you like it, you will want to read the six other books in the series. Around the age of 10, uh, so it must have been perhaps a few years after Les Rois Maudits were broadcast on TV, I read an abridged version of Ivanhoe, or Ivanoe, as we say in French, uh, by Sir Walter Scott, of course. I really enjoyed it. I could totally picture in my mind, you know, tournaments with knights and uh, horses racing in the forest and 
ladies wearing long veils, you know. I was pretty into Ivanhoe. <laughs> Uh, right from the first time I, I read it, I have read it many times uh, since then, but uh, around the age of 10 already it made a huge in impression on me. And uh, shortly after I finished the book, uh, we watched the, um, the movie, the 1952 movie with, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, Robert Taylor, John Fontaine. And uh, I, I really loved it. I mean, the, the movie is dated to our modern standards, but uh, it kept its magic. And uh, its magic definitely worked on me <laughs> when I was a child. So after The Accursed King, at least the, the TV show of The Accursed King, Ivanhoe would have to be uh, one of the first uh, literary uh, experiences that and made me fall in love with the Middle Ages. At this time, um, my family and I were used to visit medieval castles and ruins and uh, old churches. There's a lot of those in France, <laughs> despite the revolution and all the destruction. So, of course, I could totally picture in my mind knights in shining armors and um, ladies and, uh, you know, mag magicians in the ruins we were visiting. So. Uh, it all worked together, you know, to for me to build that world, that medieval world in, in my mind. And of course, after Ivanhoe, I got to read uh, several tales of the Arthurian legend, especially uh, Chrétien de Troyes and his novel Yvain le Chevalier au Lion, Yvain the Knight of the Lion. You also have Lancelot, the Knight of the Cart, Lancelot, le Chevalier à la Charrette. But Yvain, uh, the, the Knight uh, of the Lion, is the one I remember best. I think that's the first one I read by Chrétien de Troyes. Uh, this time this is not really a piece of historical fiction because it's a, a medieval author writing about early Middle Ages legends, so <laughs> it worked perfectly for a young uh, creative mind uh, and uh, it made me fall that much more in love with uh, the Middle Ages, so, so Ivanhoe and the tale of the Knight of the Round Table were fantastic. And soon after, I believe it was in seventh grade, uh, the Middle Ages were featured in our history syllabus. And our teachers took us to visit Cluny National Museum of the Middle Ages. This is a museum I am well acquainted with now because, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> I love the Middle Ages so much that I, my field <laughs> at the university was actually medieval art, <laughs> medieval art history. So, of course, uh, now, uh, I know the Museum of Cluny like the back of my hand, but back in seventh grade, it was the first time I went there and uh, we had such a blast with my class, you know. Um, we were running everywhere, we had, you know, um, riddles to, to find answers for looking at the paintings and the armors and the, the tapestries, so it, it, we had a grand time. And um, on top of that visit and all the stuff we had to study in class, we were required to read this book. This is actually the copy uh, I kept for this book. Jean Combe Nogues, Le Faucon des Nichés. Unfortunately, it has not been translated in English, but uh, roughly the title would be uh, The Hawk That Was Removed from the Nest. This is the story of this young boy you see here, and um, <clears throat> he's a serf, and um, he finds this hawk. Uh, and uh, at the time, this is feudal times, you know, only the lords and the ladies had the right to have a hawk, uh, you know, a hunting bird. And so the, the, the child keeps this bird 
he knows it's forbidden. He keeps his bird, and um, it, it's a secret. Some point is uh, is discovered, and uh, a lot of adventures uh, ensue. So um, this is a, a, a nice book for children because it captures your imagination. Uh, you can totally identify to this little boy, and uh, yeah. From seventh grade, I was definitely hooked. <laughs> I was utterly and completely head over heels in love with this time period. I started looking for more and more books talking about the Middle Ages, set in the Middle Ages. And of course, historical fiction was the main source of reading for, for me. I was perhaps 13, 14. I fell in love with a French author who specialized in historical fiction set in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. I'm talking about Jeanne Bourin. Unfortunately, it appears that none of her books has been translated in English yet, uh, which is a shame because if you love the Middle Ages, uh, you would totally, totally love her books. So I have a few, a few of those to show you. So the first series is this one, La Chambre des Dames, The Ladies' Bedroom, and its sequel, Le Jeu de la Tentation, The Game of Temptation. So this is a, a series of two books, the, the other one is the same. And uh, we follow the Brunel family, especially the female uh, members of the Brunel family. There are goldsmiths living in Paris in the 13th century and uh, working for the court of Saint Louis, Louis the, the Ninth, Saint Louis if you prefer, which is a very important historical figure in, in France for the Middle Ages, one of the most famous and beloved kings we ever had. And that is saying something. <laughs> Uh, even in the country of the French, of the revolution, you know. <laughs> we didn't always cut their heads off, so... Uh, so we follow this family on several generations, especially the females, and uh, we... Th this is a very modern take on females and their, their station in society, in medieval society. We see that these women could inherit they could have a business, workshops, employees. They could, you know, uh, have sex with whomever they wanted. And uh, this is precisely what happens in La Chambre des Dames, in the, the ladies' bedroom, <laughs> as you can guess. So there's love, passion, uh, treason. This is a very immersive read. Jeanne Bourin knows... Uh, the, the Middle Ages society very well and so she uses lots of details and small little things that make you believe that you're actually living in the 13th century <laughs> and uh, this is why she's a very well renowned author in France and this is why I love her books so much because when you read those you you're there, you're over there in the past with those characters. So, really love this series. And I really love this other series I want to mention. Again, two books for, from one series. You have Les Pérégrines, which means the female pilgrims, and Les Compagnons d'Eternité, which is the sequel, The Fellows of Eternity. And so, uh, in these two books, we follow three French sisters who take part in the First Crusade uh, at the very end of the, the 11th century. So we follow them through a lot of hardship. This is how they find themselves as well, you know. Uh, they go through so much together. They find love. They know great loss. So, and the three sisters are very different and those characters are very, very well fleshed out. Same with the, the, the ladies' bedroom and its sequel. 
you can totally relate to the characters. They are so, so real. And again, Jean Bourin uh, gives so much detail. This is such um, an immersive read. You're really there going to the Crusades, you know, trying to free the Holy Land. And you're with the sisters. And if you're a female reader, perhaps you can also identify with one of the sisters. They are so very different. Perhaps there's one that's very close to your your own character. Um, that's what happened to me. So perhaps that's why I, I loved it so much. Uh, and uh, so I read it as a teenager, as I said. And uh, those books are so great. The last book by Jeanne Bourin I wanted to mention is a standalone. And this is Tressage Héloïse, which would roughly translate very wise Héloïse. This is a very short book, but <laughs> it packs such a punch. This book made me weep so hard. <laughs> I was weeping, you know, crying my eyes out with this story. I knew what I was in for because this story uh, is talking about Eloise and her lover and then later husband Abelard, who are two uh, historical figures from the middle of the 12th century. Abelard was a scholar, he was uh, a priest, and uh, he fell in love with her, his pupil, Eloise. At first he was supposed to teach her the Greek authors and <laughs> history, and at some point he started teaching her different things, <laughs> you know? And uh, he was punished for this by her uncle. Her uncle Fulbert, who was a very well-renowned man in Paris, was furious when the lovers were discovered, and he hired henchmen to uh, attack Abelard in his sleep and loiter him. Yes, you heard that right. So this love story is very powerful. This is an example of passion between a man and a woman. And uh, passion turned sour because once Abelard was mutilated in that way, of course their love had to go into another direction because physical love was no longer possible for them. So this is a book written in the first person. We are in Eloise's head. We see how this love uh, comes to, to birth and uh, how the, the passion grabs her and there's no way she can escape it. And uh, we see how much she suffers once she has to be separate from her husband, from the love of her, of her life. This is, of course, this is a, a historical fact. We, we know what happened between them. We have beautiful letters they wrote to one another uh, once they were separate. It was head of a, a monastery, she was head of a monastery at the other end of the country, and but they were writing to each other, and uh, those letters are burning, boy, <laughs> this is so hot, it touched me so deeply, it, it, it's so well written and, um, and powerful, uh, I really love that book, Christage Héloïse and Jeanne Bourin in general, if you read French, oh yes, those books, if you're not in the Middle Ages, but you're just curious, you're in for a treat, let me tell you. So those are a few examples of the books I read uh, when I was a teenager, uh, books that were set in the Middle Ages. I have read many others, but those are the ones that still stand out in my mind. So that's saying something. Of course, I will spare you all boring academic stuff I had to read. That's not that kind of video. And um, when I was around 20, I read a book I have already mentioned several times on this channel, and I apologize if you're tired of seeing it pop up, but I have to mention it in this video. Uh, so I read my beloved Victor Hugo and his masterpiece Notre Dame de Paris, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This is my favorite classic of all time. And as I have read many classics, that is saying something. There's everything in it. And of course, uh, 
it set at the end of the Middle Ages, in the, at the end of the 15th century. So, so the France is about to uh, shift to what we call the Renaissance. And this, these are the last fires of the Middle Ages. And in this book, you can feel how much Victor Hugo loved uh, this period, loved Gothic architecture, as I have said uh, in the previous video. This is a love letter to Gothic architecture. And of course, <laughs> since this is my field, I can only, <laughs> only approve what Hugo is, is doing in this book and totally um, resonate with it. And uh, of course, you also have beautiful writing uh, style. Great characters that you cannot forget in Orsay. Notre Dame de Paris is of the two. So, of course, I have to mention it. These are mostly old school, even classic in this case, uh, historical fiction. But of course, you have more recent books uh, set in the Middle Ages that totally, it's not made me fall in love with the Middle Ages because I already was, <laughs> at least um, kept my love, you know, uh, burning and bright. I'm thinking about The Pillars of the Earth, uh, Le Pilier de la Terre by Ken Follett, which I have read around the age of 21, 22, something like that. So not long after reading the and rereading and the Victor Hugo, Notre Dame de Paris. And um, there are many things in common between the two books, especially the fact that uh, a lot of the plot revolves around uh, the building, uh, a, a cathedral, uh, a Gothic church. So uh, if you enjoyed The Pillars of the Earth, and you haven't read Notre Dame de Paris, The Hunchback of Notre Dame yet, I guess you might enjoy Victor Hugo's book. Uh, there, there has to be something for you in it. And um, yeah, I will stop there because believe me, I could go on and on for hours. That's not the point of this video. Let me just show you the last books I picked. Um, and I intend to read very soon. This is a trilogy by Mireille Calmel called Le Chant des Sorcières, The Song of the Witches, and it is set in France at the end of the Middle Ages. And we follow, if I understand right, because I still have to read those, but we follow um, different female characters evolving uh, in court and these female characters are witches or at the very least they have mystical powers and there's a rivalry between those two uh, two main ladies a good one and an evil one so <laughs> that shouldn't be too difficult to grasp i'm really looking forward to this read because i have already read a book by Mireille Calmel which I no longer have, but it was Le Lit d'Aliénor, the, the bed of Eleonore. And uh, it was a romanticized account of the life of Eleonore, of, um, or Eleanor, I don't know how you pronounce it, of Aquitaine, the wife of uh, Henry II Plantagenet, King of England. And it was very well written, so I, I think I will have a good time with this trilogy with witches and intrigue uh, at court and um, rivalry between women and of course passion and finding love and treason. It sounds exciting, right? So you see, uh, I still read lots of books uh, set in the Middle Ages. I just can't, cannot get enough. and. Uh, if there's something I hope this video will accomplish, that it will make you wish to perhaps uh, read historical fiction set in the Middle Ages, or perhaps pick one of those books, at least those that were translated in English, like the Accursed King or the Victor Hugo book, you know? I hope you enjoyed this content. I tried not to gush 
so much. <laughs> but when you're passionate about something, that's very difficult to do, you know. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Au revoir.